Hi everybody, welcome to Feed Your Spark. Today we'll be doing my family's recipes. So let's get started. First we're going to make my manicotti. And this is my family's um, spaghetti sauce. I wanted to do uh, like shoot something yesterday, but I didn't have the chance to do it. When you make the spaghetti sauce, what you do is you take a can of tomato paste in a big, huge pan. You fill the pan with the water, and then you add meatball sausage and pork neck bones, and you cook it all day. No joke, all day. Like I started it at 10 o'clock, and then I took it off the stove at 6. That's how long you cook it for. And I um, crushed up the meatballs and sausage, so I made like a meat sauce. Okay. So, to make the manicotti, what you're gonna do, you're gonna take ricotta cheese, Parmesan cheese, um, and Romano cheese, eggs, and that's gonna make the filling. And I really don't have amounts for these, I just kinda eyeball it like, yeah, that looks good. And then you're just going to mix this up, and that's going to be the filling for the manicotti. And you can add kind of whatever you want, like if you want to add like spinach or garlic or any kind of seasoning, you can do that. But this is just, and I'm going to use the same filling for the lasagna that I'm going to make next episode. is made, you're going to fill the manicotti shells. If you want to, you can cook them beforehand, but I'm show you a trick so that you don't have to. My garbage can over there. Take care of that later. You're going to take the cheese mixture. We're going to fill. A plastic bag and you can use the same trick like if you're decorating cookies or cakes or anything like that anything where you have to would normally use like a piping bag you can use this you take the filling and make sure you wind it up real tight so it won't like leak out the bottom because that's not gonna help it you cut off the tip And then you fill the manicotti shells just like it. Is this working? Before put your strainer down. So before you put them in the pan, what you want to do is you want to put a layer of sauce down. It'll keep the pasta from burning at the bottom of the pan. Like so. I know it seems kind of thick. That's because it's been in the fridge all night. And it'll kind of thin out as it's in the oven. Right. Also, what you're going to do is you're going to take one cup of water add it to the sauce because then as it's cooking the noodles will add a, soak up the water and it'll cook as it's cooking I fail at words today and you can do this when you do lasagna we'll do that with the lasagna when we get in the next episode You continue to fill the manicotti shells. Once you've done that, 
you turn on the oven. All right, so now we're gonna make cannoli filling. So I told you in the la one of the previous episodes, um, what you do is you take four cups of milk, you bring that to a simmer, and then you add three quarters cup sugar and three quarters cup cornstarch. The sugar obviously is gonna sweeten it and the cornstarch is gonna thicken it. Once that has thickened up to the consistency of a pudding, you stick that in the fridge overnight to get that cold. Then, like I said, you could use chocolate chips if you want, but I use um, just chopped up dark chocolate. This one has almonds. You can use whatever you want. It's all up to you. Personal preference. Then you add 15 ounces of ricotta cheese. This is a great value brand, obviously. And then you mix it all together. Or stab the crap out of it. That works too. And you stir it until it's all incorporated. Just like that. And you can buy cannoli shells at any Italian bakery. We have a recipe for cannoli shells, but they're time consuming. They're involved. It takes like two days to make them in a hot fryer and I don't have a fryer. So, but this is the cannoli filling. It's very good. I like it a lot. This is Jessica. She's been my best friend since, well, I'm not allowed to say, but it's been a long time. <laughs> There's a legal precedence. If you've been as friends as long as we have, you're not allowed to say no. how long you've been friends. But Jessica, Jessica's had everything that we're making today, so she can tell you all about it. We've been, been fantastic. Junior high. We've been friends since junior high. I think that's safe enough to say. That doesn't give years or ages. Or centuries. Centuries. Yep. <laughs> Next, we're going to be making peanut butter cookies. So this is my family's recipe book. This has every single recipe <laughs> our whole entire family ever has. And I'm not good at baking, like I told you before. So I'm pulling out the recipe. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take half a cup of butter, half a cup of white sugar, half a cup of brown sugar. Now the difference between white sugar and brown sugar is Brown sugar has molasses in it. That's why it's sticky and it clumps. And you have to pack it in there. One egg. And then one teaspoon of vanilla. And we're just gonna eyeball that. Because screw rules. Right. Well, not in baking. <laughs> that was a joke, Jessica. There's no joking in baking. That's just true. And then the peanut butter. And we're just going to cream this. And what that means is we're going to make sure it's all mixed together. Now, when you're baking, when you're baking cookies, when you're baking anything, you need to mix your wet ingredients separate from your dry ingredients because otherwise it's just going to turn into a big huge pile of mush and that is no good. So, ready to put it. This is a pastry blender. It's what you make pie crust with. We're going to use that right now because it is a useful tool. And then you're just going to cream. Make sure it's all mixed together nicely. And you want to make sure that the butter is at room temperature. Otherwise it's going to be a nightmare. Heat and total nightmare. Not gonna mix for nothing. And like everything else, you do it until it's all incorporated. Like that. And we're gonna take another bowl and we're gonna mix our dry ingredients. Which is one and a quarter cup of flour. Three 
one teaspoon baking soda. And the baking soda is going to make sure that it um, rises so they don't turn out completely flat. You don't just want it like a completely flat, you want a little bit to it. And then half a teaspoon of salt. Because the salt will bring out like the sweetness and the sugar and balance it out. And what I like to do, and what this is going to do is it's going to add air to it. So it's kind of like sifting it. And that's just going to, again, make sure it doesn't clump up too much and create a big huge mess. And you can add it like half at a time. That way it incorporates better. Why does it always seem like it took hours to make cookie dough when we were kids? Because time moves differently when you're a child versus when you're an adult. That's true. Time-space continuum gets faster uh, as you age. It's part of that big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff, right? That and it just getting you there to see you can die. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. She's really not. Like, this is normal conversations with us. We're both big huge nerds, if you haven't figured that out by now. I hope you did. I'm sorry if you didn't. I didn't mean to, for you to feel like we lied to you, because we're nerds. Big huge nerds. Well, they can't tell I'm a nerd because I'm wearing my work outfit. Yeah which is very sedate, and you can't see either of my nerdy tattoos. Work in your office. Yeah, Jessica has Star Trek tattoos. You're gonna let the dough chill for an hour. I know this is all gonna get cut, cause That's all right. God knows it's really hot. Mmm, that's super good. Good job. Yeah. On a scale of one to 10. Hard nine. Hard nine. All right, that's acceptable. So, we have the permanently done peanut butter cookies, and they're delicious because I've already taken a bite. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten. Ten. Ah. All right. See you next time on Feed Your Spark. Bye. Bye.